All right, welcome back to another one. Uh, today we're going to talk about creating a hole in something. Um, and so people always want to know how do you create uh, an object that has a hole in the middle of it, a window. Um, the table I did the other day, but I, did, I talked about it, but I didn't really talk about it. Uh, and so I want to show you today. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create new design and get in here. And uh, in terms of my class, uh, the criteria we have for today is we're going to leave the grid in millimeters. We're going to update this to assignment uh, five. This is assignment five, I believe. And then we are going to uh, go ahead and create a uh, an object with a hole in it. Now, the the thing I when I started thinking about this project, I was trying to think of something you know in, in real world that we could do, and uh, I happened to be doing something with my windows. And so I thought, hey, let's re recreate a window pane. So I actually took the um, uh, measuring tape and I went and measured my windows. Uh, and my, my window is a, a four pane window that was 44 inches wide um, by 44 inches tall. And um, I can't remember if that was one window or two side by side, but the way I did it on here, the way I wanted to do it on here was just going to do one window. So 44 inches wide by 44 inches tall. Now, again, with my grid at only 8 inches by 8 inches, I'm going to use the scale model. So I am going to drag my little notes tool over here again, and I'm going to do type my scale model is 1 inch is equal to 1 millimeter. So again, any time that I'm uh, going to have a project where my measurements are going to be different than what they are in the real world uh, or, or whatnot, anything that I want to remember, I'm going to drop that in a note and I can go ahead and leave that off to the side. Now, to do this, I want a four pane window. And this is what I'm talking about when I talk about a four pane window. I just Googled four pane window and found one that looked pretty good. So I'm gonna create a window that has uh, you know, these edges on the outside with the lines going in the middle, kind of looks like a plus sign in a box, right? So this is what we're gonna create. And I'm gonna show you an easy way to do that. Uh, because, again, with design, you want specific measurements. So for us, it's going to be pretty simple, right? We're going to drag a box over, right? And if we want one that's 44 inches wide, we, I could create two panes at a time. I could even create all four and try to line it up. But since I know that, that the window, I want, it, I want it to be even all the way around, I can literally create one square at a time and then put that square on top, uh, duplicate it, put it on top like we did yesterday, the duplicate tool, and then duplicate the whole side and slide it over. So take a look. I want it 44 inches wide, so half the window is going to be 22. So again, just follow along with me. I want a 22 inch wide and a 22 inch tall. I'm going to cut my 44 inches. Oh, that was the wrong one. This is my 22 inches tall. I'm going to cut my 44 uh, inch window into four cubes, right? So if it's 44 inches wide this way and 44 inches tall, if I cut that in half, I'm looking at 22 by 22. Now, when I think of a window, a window at home might be about four inches wide. Uh, honestly, I don't remember what my measurement was for how wide the window is. I'm going to go ahead and make it four millimeters wide to liken that to about a four inch thick window. And that might even be too thick, but that would actually be way better when it comes to keeping the heat out or the cold out, right? Now, what I want to do is I want to cut a hole out in the middle of that, and I want to make it even all the way around. So it took a little bit of math, and I did some math on paper, but I decided that if I used an 18-inch box, right, and I centered an 18-inch box in the middle of 22 by 22, that that would give me how many inches left on each side. I'll let you think about that. So if I center this box, in order to do that, I'm going to need to use the work plane tool. So I'm going to put the work plane tool on the front of this um, uh, square that I've created, right? I'm going to rotate it just to the side so you can see it. And then I'm going to bring a block over. I'm going to put it right on here. Now, again, I want this 18 inches by 18 inches. So I guess I'll go ahead and uh, rotate it back around, and I'll type that, right? Now, here's the deal. How do I get that perfectly in the middle? Some of you are going to try to slide it around and do all of that. Why don't you just use the tools that Tinkercad has that will make your life a whole lot easier? So if I highlight both of them, and again, to highlight some of you are struggling, don't click on the object that moves the object. Click somewhere off the object, click and drag, and make that big old box 
around it. And again, you only have to touch a portion of them. Just, just any little section of the object and it highlights both of them. Now watch, when I hit the align tool, right? I want this perfectly in the center this way. Somehow I got it perfectly in the center this way. But how do I get this to punch through? Well, why don't I put it perfectly in the center this way too? Uh, the only problem is that moves it off the work plane. But it actually doesn't really matter because we're going to change the work plane. So you see how now that's perfectly in the center? Now I can go ahead and uh, at this point, since both of them are selected, I can hit the group button. Now, when I group a solid and a whole, it creates, it cuts it out, okay? At this point, I'm going to go ahead and drop the work plane back down on the ground. Now, here's the funny thing, you know, that I think it's funny. That's the hard, that was it. That was the hardest part. There's nothing, there's nothing harder to this than that, right? I'm going to change it to white because white is the color of my windows at home. Now, here's what I want to do. I want four of these, so I'm going to duplicate this, just like I did yesterday in the video. Duplicate it, and look, this is 22 uh, millimeters tall to simulate my 22 inches. It's sitting on the ground. What if I raised the duplicated one off the ground 22 millimeters? Now look what's happening. The one is sitting right on top of the other one. See that? It's sitting right on top. Now I can go ahead and double check it, double check it to make sure the alignment is correct, but the alignment should be fine. See how it's grayed out? Because all I did was change the distance off the floor. Now that I have them both selected, hit the group button. Now there's half my window. See that? Now, how do I create the other side of the window? I'm going to click on this again and I'm going to hit duplicate. And then all I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure my snap grid is at one millimeter. And I can literally click to the right 22 times. Or I can actually, you know, from here it's 32 over. For yours it might be different. You know, if yours said 14, whatever this number is right here from this green arrow, you can add 22 to. And it'll move it over 22 times. If that's too confusing, looking at it from this direction, just press it to the right 22 times. That's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 20, 21, 22. Now again, that's only if your snap grid's at one millimeter because that means every click is a millimeter. If you change that snap grid, it's going to be a lot more clicks. But the snap grid's at a millimeter, so I can click at a millimeter. A millimeter. Plus, you also recognize here this 54. My original number was 32. So 32 plus 22 becomes 54. At this point, I have to highlight both of them and hit the group button. And just like that, I have a window. So if I wanted to send this off to the design company and said, hey, make my window at these particular dimensions, a uh, millimeter equals an inch, boom, they've got their, their blueprint, they can go off and create it. Now, to practice this, I want you to do a couple of more things. Um, I don't really care what it is. I want you to drag a shape over, right? Make that shape however big you want it uh, and, and drive a hole in it with something. Again, use the work plane tool. Uh, how about a star? Now see, here's the thing, right? You're going to have to make this star a little bit longer. Go ahead and use the align tool. Center it up. Uh, where's it at? This center box, that center dot. That'll put that through the middle. Okay, and I don't care. I don't care if it's centered any other way. Just showing you how to center it. You could also click on. Uh, if I wasn't using the align tool, you could also click on this uh, cone right here to move it in and out. Now, what you are going to have to do is change it from the yellow color that it is, or whatever color it comes from over here, to a hole. And then you're going to have to highlight both of them and hit group. Drop the work plane back down on the floor. Now do that one more time. Okay. So for the assignment portion, in terms of my class, uh, assignment five, grid in millimeters, create the window, and create two more shapes with a hole in it, and call it a day. Let me know if you have any uh, struggles. I'll give you some help. See you next time.